Yeah, good, good evening. Um, the IPP. I'm going to tell you about the IPP. Tell you about myself. I ain't going to have no one else interfering with what I'm talking about, yeah? So, anyway, um, the IPP, yeah? Um, it was, I think it came from Holland. It was given to sex offenders. So, when they brought it to England, and the IPP come over to us sort of people for, it's given to people that are, that are, that are perpetual uh, thieves, like arm robbers, bank robbers, um, GBHs, them sort of things, yeah? People are perpetual, just keep doing things all the time. So anyway, I was, I went to, um, I think it was uh, um, Wembley, Wembley Magistrates Court, and um, anyway, uh, from there, I went to a Crown Court, yeah, and the Crown Court said, the probation jumped up and said, this man, uh, Mr Hill, is eligible to get an IPP because of what I've always done. My, all my charges have been GBHs with intent, GBH is sex and 18, attempted murder, sex and 18, uh, you know, uh, armed robberies, uh, GB, oh, so much, so many violent offences, yeah. So, the judge says this, I think, all right, uh, would you look into it, please? So when I went up next time, when I got sentenced um, at, I think it was at, um, was it, was it to Harrow Crown Court? So I got a flat on Harrow Crown Court anyway in the end. But anyway, I was at Harrow Crown Court um, and obviously my co-defendant, he put me right in it. But forget about the co-defendant, it's tell you about the IPP, yeah? So I was given an IPP of two and a half years, you know. I'd already done two and a half years, I mean, mine, so I thought, well, you know, am I going to be released more or less straight away? But when I went back to where I was, um, in the corner there, in the drugs unit, they told me that an IPP is an indefinite sentence of 99 years. No one really knew too much about it at that time, and I got it in 05, yeah? It just really, really come out. It come out in 03, but it wasn't, didn't really come out in 05 as such for people like myself, yeah? So when I heard that, I couldn't believe it, you know? I thought, nah, that can't be right. I mean, you can't be giving me a life sentence for, for, for that charge, and which I've already been offered. I was already offered by the, uh, by the DPP. They offered me um, a nine-year sentence, nine years. You know, and I thought to myself, nah, I don't want nine years. I want to fight it, yeah? But I got guilty. So I wish I had it for the nine years. Anyway, but I didn't. So I got the IPP. Now, the IPP, uh, when we first started, when you, I went to, I was in the scrubs. Then I got chucked out of the scrubs over, over Pete Doherty. Anyway, I went to the Mount, yeah? Uh, whilst, when I was there, um, you know, you've got to go see the psychology because of psychology, uh, I'm giving you courses. In, when I was at the Scrubs, you get courses, ETS, you know, it's enhanced thinking skills, you know, those sort of courses and other other courses. And you do, uh, we had to do cleaning courses when I was in the corner there, you know, for the drugs units and all them. So lots of courses, yeah? So all, call, all told, I've done about 10 courses, you know? But the most important ones, uh, when I went to the Mount, was calm. And it was like controlling anger and learn to manage it, yeah? But there was a lot more little courses around with it, yeah, that you also had to do, about another 10 courses. But the, the, the calm was the most important one, yeah? And there's another course, it's CSCP. Well, CSCP is a um, connective self-changing program. That it's a course that is done for armed robbers, murderers, them sort of people, yes. Yeah. So I thought I was going to get that. And if you get that course, the chances of ever getting out is nil. You could be in for 30, 40 years. I'm not joking. It's a bad course, yeah? Anyway. So because I'm I'm under the psychology, yeah, and every morning you come out of your cell, you go to the board, and you go and see the psychology. It's about, it's about three women. You know, and they're doing your psychology, they're talking to you, they're getting you to act, to act your robberies, yeah, and your violence and all them sort of things, uh, to see if you can, um, how can I say, if you can challenge your thoughts, 
if you challenge your thoughts, you know, because we're not told about challenging your thoughts, but it's something we've got to do, the pros and cons, you know. And we've got to, you know, but we don't know about it, but they're looking at us thinking, you know, let's have a look. And, and, and none of us done it. So we've got to go through all these courses, four years, five years, mate, on courses. So not only have you got to do the courses, but I was very, very dyslexic and it was very hard for me, yeah? So I would stay up um, like two, three, four o'clock in the morning uh, trying to read what I had to do and write properly, yeah? And so it was hard for me, but I had to do it to get out, yeah? No one wants to stay in there. No one wants to be big time trying to be tired, mate, when you're going to do that sort of a sentence, 99 years. So you want to get out, yeah? So anyway, so I had to do the courses. And these psychology courses ain't good, mate. They're not good, you know. Anyway, so I get the courses. I'm doing them as much as I can. Uh, sometimes you don't they stop it for a couple of weeks and you learn, you go back to your cell and you're writing things out, yeah? Then it starts again and it stops and starts. But I was lucky because I was one of the first ones to get the IPP and I was one of the first ones to do the psychology courses, you know? So when you go and see these psychologists, they're all young girls, um, they they put you through it, yeah? They put you through it. They've only just come out of college. They put you put you through it, yeah? You, and there's no... See, when you're on this IPP, um, you've got to be really at your best behaviour, mate. You know, you can't afford to get yourself in any trouble. I got myself in a bit of aggravation with Pete Doherty. That there could have set me back two years, but I didn't know that, you know, about this IPP. But obviously I did get to know about it when I went on the board and they told me about Pete Doherty and how much it set me back. So phew, I couldn't believe it, you know what I mean? So then you realise it's not worth getting yourself involved in any violence. So you've got to wipe your mouth. You've got to be one of, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an ex-fighter. I'm an ex-unlicensed fighter and I'm an ex-street fighter and I'm an ex-professional fighter and I'm, you know, so I can fight, yeah? But you've got to turn your back on it. You've got to turn your back on it. You know, you've got to walk away from any trouble. You've got to challenge your thoughts. So they learn you to challenge your thoughts, you know, and you learn to challenge them. What's the point? What's the point? If I go out there, clump someone, uh, get nicked, put back two years of my IPP, I'm never going to get out. So you wipe your mouth. You take a lot of stick from people. You've got what you've got to take, a lot of stick. Just go away. Like a child, go away. And it comes to that sort of thing, yeah? So... You go up in your first. You go up to your first one. Uh, no one ever gets it. No one ever gets it. You know. You go up there. You, you, you come over your case. You got case officers and all this that. You got probation officers. Case officers. Person is in in the in the prison, and you got your probation officer. Anyway, they, they try for you, yeah. But the pro board are not really bothered that much about you at that time, and then. Uh, because I was getting on with everything I should do, I went to um, this this wing, this block you go to, which is the one of the only blocks in the prison system where you go there and it's close to getting out. Yeah? It's like a decap, but it's not a decap. You ain't going nowhere, yeah? But the doors are open nearly 24-7. They're shut at night, yeah? You walk around, you do whatever you want to do. It's a good place to be in, yeah? So I'm in there and I'm, you know, it's, everything's going sweet for me. But one day, as every, everyone knows, Mr. Fish comes in there, causes a little problem, has a fight with someone upstairs, causes a problem. They think that I'm involved in it. I'll go down the block. I'll go to another wing, yeah? So because of that, um, I'm set back another two years odd for my parole. And I think, you know, you know, you really don't realise how much it hurts, yeah? So I'm saying to myself, what the fuck's going on here, yeah? Anyway, so fish goes, everything's... I, I take over the gym as a gym orderly job. I'm working, 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 doing whatever I can do to get out. I want to get out. There's no point in being in there. Two and a half year tariff. I've done seven and a half years, eight years already off a two and a half years tariff, tariff yeah? I was going to say I'm lucky because I'm one of the first ones to get the IPP 
and to do the courses. Now I'm up for my, my third IPP, my third parole board, yeah? Uh, don't forget, I've been nicked with fish, bits and pieces, so it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good, they're knocking me back again. So they give me a year's not back, a year, yeah? So in a year, I'm still on the psychology. I'm getting to learn the pros and cons, the challenging your thoughts, everything. Everything that they're giving me, I'm learning because I'm dyslexic, but I've learned. I've really put my mind, I've learned what to do, yeah? So anyway, my comes up, my, my officer, my case officer in, in the wing, nice guy, yeah? But they're all nice guys, yeah? But you're just a convict. But anyway, I do all my work, gym work. I've done all my psychology work. My probation officer, a woman called Christina Lowe, fantastic probation officer. She's now one of the heads at the army office, but she's fantastic, Christina Lowe. Absolutely the best, the best probation officer you could ever wish for. Yeah, very, very strict, but good. We go up to the we go up to the parole board, and they're fighting for me, mate. They're really, really fighting for me, Christina Rowe. You know, she's telling me this and telling me that, yeah. So anyway, I don't get a knock back, but I get well. I've got to go back again. They're not ready for me, so I've got to go back. And they send Christina Rowe a paper. Christina Rowe comes and sees me, and she's in a bad way. She's in a bad way. She can't believe what's going on. She said, look, I've got a paper here, Ray. Uh, they've read your case, your case papers. They put you down for CSCP, Connective Self Changing Program. And it's not for you, Ray. You're not doing this. You know, you've done everything possible they want you to do. They're not going to get you to do that. It's not going to be for you, Ray. You're never going to get out of this. This is one of the worst possible things that can be about. But she fought for me. And they, they changed it, yeah? So I went up again. And she was so good, you know. She was really good, Christina Rowe. My case officer, um, he didn't really look that much into what I was doing, right? So the parole board was run by this woman. She was, there was three of them. And the most, the one in charge was the one in the middle, the woman, yeah. She said to my case officer uh, about this thing that my case officer said I hadn't done, you know. So she said... If Mr. Hill had done this uh, particular course, had done this, would you think that he should be released and put in DCAT? Well, if he's done it, yes. <laughs> but he hasn't done it. She said, well, I've got a bit of news for you. Mr. Hill has done it. And he'd done it remarkably well for a guy who's, 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 who's uh, uh, the way he is, yeah, he's dyslexic. And he shut, his, he shut up. And I thought, well, that's it, you know. I'm going to get a decat, maybe. So I'm in the wing. I'm in my cell. Hill to the office. I go to the office. Five or six screws in there. They say, listen, we've got a bit of bad news here, mate. And, you know, I went, no, 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 don't say that. You know what I mean? And I thought I was going to get a decat, yeah? And they said, you're, you're getting a bit released, mate. It was the biggest shot of my life. I couldn't believe it. I felt like crying there and then, yeah? I was in a trembling. I was in a bad way. Just imagine, you know, 10 years. And you're going to be released, yeah? Uh, I can't believe it, mate. But I'm still an IPP, whatever, yeah? And anyway, I'm asking people to read it for me. I go in my cell, shut my cell door. I can't believe it. I keep reading it, reading it, reading it, yeah? In the morning, I go to my case officer. I to explain it to me. I go and see the psychology. They're the ones that's got me it. I go and see them. I get to see my base officer. Yes, you're coming home. This that, and the other year. I can't. It's a big shock to me. So I think it's October the first. They release me, um, and it's a funny old thing, you know. Um, a mate of mine in prison, nice guy, man. He had these new jeans that he bought, and he said, "Go on, you can have a pair of them." And I couldn't get it on, you know. My waist is too big, so I trained for a whole month on the bike, on the rowing machine, and got right down for these jeans to fit me and were a bit loose, yeah? So anyway, I walked out, jeans, T-shirt, my mate picked me up outside, Gary Francis, nice guy, and 
when I was out, I, was out, I couldn't believe that I was out. It, I sh it shook me up, yeah, it really shook me up. I couldn't believe it. He put his foot down in his murk, he put the life out of me, yeah. I was in a bad way, I didn't know what to do. Um, when I'd go and see my mum, all cries, tears, then I had to go to the hostel. And when I went to my hostel, they would tell me, you know, give me this, my law, what I should do, what I shouldn't do. You know, got followed by the rules. It's okay. Anyway, so now I'm out. You know, I'm out. Um, one day, uh, this is, you know, I'm going to tell you what's got, what went on. I, it, one day I could hear people run up and down the stairs. It was the police. I run up and down the stairs late at night, two or three o'clock in the morning, on the thing, all that crap. And they nick taking people out of the out their rooms and they're nicking them, and it, you get petrified. You don't know it could it could come for you. You ain't done nothing, but you it is petrified. You know what I mean? Anyway, I eventually I'm gonna get out of there. But one day I'm in my cell, I'm masturbating, and a woman comes in my cell to check it without knocking my door. Sees me doing that. Oh, runs out and goes downstairs, tells the office whatever. In the morning, I've got to go to got to go to the um, to the office, explain myself, you know. And it's not good to explain yourself, but I did. And they're laughing about it. Thought it was funny. I thought it was funny, but you've got to be careful, you know. It's not a joke, yeah. Anyway, eventually they told me now because uh, I've been here quite some time. I've seen my mum and this and the other. And I'm still an IPP. I'm still doing an IPP sentence. It doesn't matter. You still got to be so careful. More careful on the street than you are in prison. Because in prison, you know everything. You know people who are going to come up and stab you in the back. You're aware of, all, you're aware of everything. You've gone through them Albanese. You've gone through them big nicks, you know. You've gone through them nicks where people stab and cut and hot water. You've gone through that. You've gone through them beat, that side of life. You hurt people, bash them up. Yeah, but you've not been nicked. So now you're out on the street. They're going to me. I've been there six months. I'm an IPP, they're telling me that you've got to find a, uh, a place where you can live. Because if not, we would say send you back to the mount. It's not my job to find it. It's, I've got my case, my probation officer who's checking my for, for a home for me. He works for the hostel. So he's gone to me, I've got a place for you, eh? I go, okay. It's, well, I was living in Kingston when I was nicked, but I was nicked in Shepherd's Bush. Bet they put me back to Kingston. So I go to Kingston, goes there, sees the woman. Uh, we've got a place for you. We've got a place for you, but, uh, you know, it's definitely uh, for you, for your age, residential home. A residential home? I said, no, that's not for me. Mr. Hill, a residential home is for you, yeah? We want you to go and see it. It's a really, really clean place. You've got a nice room. You've got all this, that, and the other. Right? I go there with my probation officer, my housing probation officer. I go there. Mate, I walked into this room. There's about, I don't know, we've all got to, get, got to get old, mate. But some of us get old, but not old, yeah? And there's all these people playing dominoes, cards, Zimmer frames, and they walk, in that, walk into the front of this room and it smells like you wouldn't believe, you know? And I went, Phew. They take me to a room, shower, bed, and that's about it, yeah? And all around the walls, there's these things you can press if you need help from any assistance, from someone from the hostel, from the, uh, from the residential home, yeah? I go back, I don't want it, I can't have this. Go back, I'm going back to the hostel, I don't want this. So I go back to the hostel and say, look, Mr. Hill, you've got two chances. We've got one more chance. If you don't take it, you might end up going back to the mount. The man I'm with sends me to a place opposite um, Ikea on North Circular. I go to this place. As I open the door, I ain't a racist guy, yeah? But as I open the door, there's maybe five, six Indians, Sri Lankans, or whatever they are, running round with pots. In and out of the kitchen, it stunk like a curry house, yeah? I goes to my room, 
I've got a bed that I can just about fit on. I've got a shower that's absolutely right stinks. I've got a toilet that's full of poo, stained up. And I went, this isn't for me. The window, you couldn't even know the window because it's right on the north circular. And the windows are dark, dirty, with dust and shit. You can't open them. You can't see. I went, no, no, it's ain't for me. I'd rather go back to the mount. Now, anyway, so it goes back. Even my housing probation officer says, no, you can't have this. This is too much. There may be 10, 15 people in there, and they're all Indians, all running around cooking, and this it's not for you. I could see me, I could see me getting involved with something, GBH, 6 and 18, smashing people to pieces. I ain't going to stand for it. You know, they're all playing music, holla holla, and shit like that, yeah? So I go back to, to, to the hostel. I go in the office, they warn me, right? They warn me that you could be going back to the mill. I thought, oh, fuck this. But, you know, what can I do? I was going down a gym in Italy, Broadway called the Eden's Gym. It belongs to a friend of mine, yeah? So I'm in a training. I'm training every morning in there, yeah? He asked me that if I want a job as a, as a, as a, as a trainer, you know? So I'm saying, well, you know, not yet, yeah? Because I'm thinking I'm going back. It's crazy, man. As I walk up the stairs from Eden, it's going to the Uxbridge Road. Beep, beep, beep. It's my mate, a guy called Stevie Smith. I know Steve, and I was in the mountain with him. I know, hey, what are you doing, mate? Well, I'm out, you know, I've been out here, I'm on your stool, but it looks like we're going back, I need a flat. Mate, I've got a flat. Why I've got flats? Do you want a flat? I'll get you a flat. I'm going to get you a flat. Get in the car. Goes to the hostel. I'm going to look at a flat. Y'all came in still. Boom. Take me to Harrow, yeah? Where one bedroom flat, I'm happy. That's what I want, yeah? I love it. Sees my housing officer. He comes and sees it. Yes, Mr. Dill. He okays it. Everything's okay. You've got to tell him. If you don't okay it, you ain't going to get it. But he okays it. It's past all, everything. So I'm happy. So then I've got to go see uh, a drugs officer. It's Hamwell, right? Uh, I was, as I say, on crack and bits and pieces. So he's giving me stick about crack. This is Jamaican, nice guy. He's giving me stick about this, giving me stick about that. Um, he wants to come and see my flat in Harrow to see what it's like. He's heard Harrow is a bit of a place where there's drugs going about, people. You know, so he wants to come and see it to see if it's safe enough for me to be there. I've already been told it is, but he's one of the people that okay it. So he comes and sees it, and as he's seeing it, he says, well, come and see me tomorrow. I go and see him tomorrow, and he says to me, you're really lucky, Mr Hill, to have all this. I went, I'm lucky. Why am I lucky? Why am I lucky? I've just done 10 years in prison. I'm an IPP that's never maybe going to get released from the IPP. I could be doing an IPP for the rest of my life. I can't do nothing with my life. I'm frightened to do anything, to, to go to the toilet. If I don't wipe my ass, I'm thinking of getting a recall. And you're telling me I'm lucky. I lost my place in Kingston. I lost my wife, my kids, my mum, my dad. I've lost everything and I'm lucky. And he walked out there. He walked out of there, out, out the uh, drugs office he walks out he come back he said Mr Hill I don't want to see you no more you're free to do whatever you want to do yeah and they let me go anyway I'm in Harrow um, lovely little place I'm getting all my furniture my daughter gives me a bit of furniture one morning crash two o'clock in the morning my door's fucking smashed to pieces it's old Bill what I can't believe it it's old Bill What's going on? They think the person that lived there before was a drug dealer and they've come to arrest him and they crashed the door down thinking it's me. I've got to give them all sorts of things and tell them I ain't, but I don't really want to let them know that I live here. But now they know who I am and I live there. Oh, oh what? But before this, when I'm at the hostel, I've been out, I've been out, what, two days, three days? 
I've got to go see my probation officer in Uxbridge. Sorry, 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 sorry. On the Uxbridge Road, Askew Road, yeah? I go and see this man. He's short, bodybuilder, and he's giving me grief. He's giving me grief about this and that and everything. He's just talking to me like a child. Anyway, he's telling me about Mapper, a Mapper, uh, where IPPs on a Mapper. He's telling me all about the Mappers. Uh, you could be watched by this, by that, by this, by that, and all of a sudden you have a BM1, there you go, Mr. Hill. But, you know, we like people to get recalled. We like people to get recalled. I can't believe what you said. Anyway, this is mad. I walked out of my probation, bumped into my friend called Jamie Bennett. Oh, Ray, I ain't seen him for 10 years, 12 years. Get in, I'll give you going. I said, I've got my mum's. Get in, because I'm going to my mum's. I'm in the hospital, but I'm going to my mum's. Get in, I'll give you a lift, mate. Goes indoors. While the phone goes. Hello? My phone, mobile phone. From probation. From the, from probation, they give me a mobile, yeah? Mr Hill, uh, come back to the probation room and see you. What's the problem? Is there a problem? Mr Hill, just come back. We would like to see you. I went, look, um, Mr. Hill, come back now, or we send the car and pick you up. I think, oh, what the fuck's going on now? But before I go to probation, I'm walking all around Askew Road, all the time turning to look for cars with people in it, look like police officers or whatever, to see that something might be going on that I don't know about, yeah? I go to probation, sits down in the room, Yes, uh, we just see you, Mr. Hill, getting in a car with a known criminal. Who's the known criminal? Jamie Bennett. Well, how did you see me get in the car? We told you about Mapper. Someone's been following you, Mr. Hill. You've just come out, so someone's followed you and see you get in the car. I feel the thing, and it's a guy called Jamie Bennett who's got a criminal record. I said, look, I don't know about a criminal record. What's a criminal record? He's been nicked for uh, stealing a car. When was this? About 19, whatever. I couldn't believe it. I said, that's like 10 years ago. Yeah, but he's still got, you're not supposed to be in, involved with criminals, Mr. Hill. I said, well, criminals is what I've been done in my life. They're the only people I know of criminals. They're like, no, no one else. In my been in that prison of my life. I know maybe thousands of criminals, <laughs> but Mr. Hill, Mr. Hill, listen to us. You might get a recall about for this, yeah? don't, don't you understand? You might get a recall. Now I'm purring myself, yeah? I'm thinking, a recall for that? Now I'm thinking about, I've got to hit someone, get out of here and go on the run. I ain't going back to prison for nothing. I ain't done nothing. But they come down, the little bodybuilder, someone else, Mr. Hill, bump, 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 you can go. But don't do it again, yeah, like a child. Oh, fucking hell. Anyway, I'm in the flat in Harrow, the police knock the door door down, they know I'm there, crash. All right, and I'm thinking, this IPP, mate, they learn you about this IPP, all right? When you walk down a road, don't forget I was a crackhead, when you walk down the road, Mr. Hill, if you see people walking towards you, what are you going to do? Well, I will walk on the opposite side of the road. I will cross over, just in case it comes to violence, you know. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Well done. And what are you going to do, Mr. Hill, if you know, if you're walking down the road and you know two or three of them roads used to be crack people, people living in houses, what are you going to do, Mr. Hill? Are you going to go down them roads? No. I will not go down the roads. I find I'd rather walk the longer way than the shorter way because of the people that living in places. It's a trigger for me, yeah? Well done, Mr. Hill. Right. Also, Mr. Hill, the biggest trigger that you're ever going to have is a thing called money. Money, Mr. Hill. What are you going to do when you start getting money? Anyway, cut a long story short, I've got to go and see the social... Because I ain't had no money. I've been out a bit of time. Six months, seven months. 
I've had money, but not a lot of money. And uh, anyway, but before I get all this moving about, see, I've got to go and see these people about it. So I'll go down to the social, give me more details. Raymond Hill just come out of prison, crash, 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 crash. Come up to me and say, Mr. Hill, you are no such a person as Raymond Hill. We can't find you as Raymond Hill. We got you down as Raymond Rollings. Yeah, no, that's right. My my real father's name was Rollings, Patrick Rollings. My father died. My mother remarried years later. And the best thing she ever done for herself, love her Rest in peace, my mum. Rest in peace, dad. Well, your dad and your mum and then you changed the ID pole. So we got you down as Ray Rollings. I said, listen, let me tell you about me. I've just come out of prison. I've just done 10 years in prison. I'm still in prison. I'm a thing called an IPP, which is an indeterminate public protection order. Right? I'm doing a life sentence of 99 years. Check it out. Under Raymond Hill. So you're trying to tell me that I'm no longer Raymond Hill, I'm Ray Rollings. So whatever I've done, I want my money for being locked up because I shouldn't be locked up because my name's not Ray, Ray, Ray Hill. It's Ray Rollings. One minute, they come back. You know, we, might, we sort it all out, you know what I mean? So anyway, so now I'm in Harrow still. I'm in Harrow. I, uh, I send, you know, loads of letters out to people, friends and this, that and the other. I need help. I need help, yeah? I need help. You know, um, I don't go nowhere. I don't do nothing. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, like, you know, I'm in here now. I'm in this flat. I don't go nowhere. I don't do nothing. I go to pubs, bars, clubs, anything. Because I'm an IPP and I'm fighting the same might happen. I've always been fighting all my life. I've always hurt a lot of people. You might be, meet someone, the son and son, this, that and the other. And you're causing problems, crash. And you get an IPP, you're going to go back to prison for two or three years, maybe longer. So I don't go out and I don't cause no problems. I'm doing weights. And a geezer that I knew his dad years ago, Dennis Haley, his geezer Terry Haley, who I'm with now, he's got a scrapyard. He comes and sees me and gives me some weights. I can't believe this geezer, mate. He gives me weights. He takes me out for the day. He gives me money. This geezer is the nicest guy you could ever wish for. He treats me like his own brother. He's done more to me than anybody. He's kept me out of trouble. He's kept me out of trouble. He looks after me. He's given me a beautiful place. He gives me money. He feeds me. takes me shopping. He's a good man, mate. Right? Now, not on top of that, on top of that, He's done a book 